1920. The closest hospital was the Brockton Hospital, but it was quite small. The closest hospital of any real scale was the Kearney, believe it or not, and the Kearney was a major Boston hospital in that time, in the first part of the 20th century. But if you wanted to get to a major hospital, you had to get in a streetcar or get in your own car and drive over rutted back roads to get to downtown Boston. At the time, hospitals were really for three things, for delivering babies, for managing injuries, and for the care of the poor. Most of the people with means got their care for medical problems. If you had a heart attack or you had some other medical problem or infection or pneumonia, most of that was managed in the home with visits from a primary care doctor and visits by the VNA. The real impetus for the uh, development of the, of the Weymouth Hospital, what's now the South Shore Hospital, was the experience of Dr. Emerson. He loaded a patient of his in a boxcar to go downtown for an appendectomy. And then he and his wife had to take a trolley to Boston when she had a complicated labor. So he felt that there needed to be a place uh, nearer for these sorts of emergencies to be managed. So Dr. Emerson gathered together a group of businessmen from the town of Weymouth, and they all agreed uh, that the hospital was needed. And there happened to be a property that was just coming on the market at the corner of Columbian and Main Street. It was a fairly substantial home, which they purchased. They sold stock in the hospital, which is interesting since it's a nonprofit, you can't actually own part of a nonprofit. So the stock certificates were really just a thank you from the Weymouth Hospital Association for the donation of money. But they got, I think it was something in the neighborhood of $15,000 together and opened a hospital in May of 1922. On the day it opened, it had 15 beds. It had three floors, but they didn't develop the third floor until subsequent years. It had on the first floor a 10, eight to 10 bed woman's ward. To get to the second floor, you had to go up a winding central staircase where there was an operating room, a delivery room, a nursery, and a couple of other wards that had between one and four beds in them. There were, I think, 54 deliveries in the first seven months. There were 85 operations that were done in the operating room, which if you work it out is a little bit less than one per business day. The operations would have been uh, largely the management of fractures, putting in traction pins, reducing dislocations under anesthesia, setting bones in plaster. Uh, it's probable that they were doing appendectomies, they might have been doing hysterectomies, uh, might have been doing mastectomies for breast cancer. Probably not doing major abdominal surgery and definitely not doing major thoracic surgery. I want to think that Dr. Emerson would be quite pleased with himself. I hope he would be, because the thing that he got started has become something really amazing. The fact that we can have a robot uh, take out somebody's left upper lobe for a lung cancer, or that the orthopedic surgeons can take complex fractures and set them without plaster, or that we can replace people's joints, or that we can even deliver babies with a maternal mortality rate of a vanishingly small number and an infant mortality rate even smaller, I think they would be astounded by. But I want to think that Dr. Emerson would have a little smile on his face and say, well, I did a good thing getting all this started.